demons? Like there's those midget, minions, those midget <laughs> minion things, and this, they're all punching them. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Uh, Amarillo Smash. Today we're going to be covering 1988's The Unholy. The Unholy was directed by Camilo Villa. Ben Cross is in this and he was in First Night. I was all obsessed with that movie <laughs> in the mid-90s. A crush on Richard Gere there? <laughs> Who didn't? The Exorcist Beginning. And he was also Sarek in the new Star Trek movies, but... Who gives a fuck about them? Ned Beatty is in this, and he's in one of our all-time favorite movies of all time, Deliverance. Yeah. And of course, a lot of us remember him as being Otis in the Superman movies. <laughs> Mr. Luthor. Hal Holbrook's in this, and he's in John Carpenter's The Fog, as well as Rituals, which we covered last year. That's right. Click the link above. So the unholy starts off with this priest in his church, and he's kneeling down praying. This woman appears and she's very scantily clad and you can see everything. It's a nice beginning to a movie. It's very nice way to start <laughs> off a movie. Mesmerized by this woman. I think anybody would, you know. He really starts to get into it. You see her hand swipe across and then you see his throat all ripped open. She really did a fucking number on him too. We then get introduced to Father Michael. He's going to this high-rise apartment building to talk down a potential suicide victim. So while he's trying to talk the guy back into the room this guy turns into a monster quickly and throws him out. <laughs> he throws him out the window. Super dummy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It then cuts to like this blind priest and he's like, oh, I guess he's not the one. Turns out that he survived the fall and not only survived it, but survived it completely unscathed. And right away, that same priest, we chose correctly. He is the one. <laughs> it's like, all right, okay. So because of this, they give him a church to take over and to make his own. And they mention that this priest before him was killed brutally. Ned Beatty's character, he plays a detective, and he's investigating the murder of that priest. But also he tells the father about another previous murder to that that nobody told him about. Mentions that day planner from the other priest. He all hides it too and everything. Plants like <laughs> the day planner just for him to find it himself two yeah, seconds yeah. later. So why plant it? So he mentions that in the day planner, this priest was supposed to meet this girl, Millie, at this club called The Threshold. And so Father Michael decides to go down to that club to see what he can find out. He shows up at this nightclub that is like this satanic nightclub. <laughs> They're all doing these rituals, like <laughs> killing people in the club in broad daylight in front of tons of people. Yeah, and he's all wearing that sick mask with that <laughs> G-string yeah. thing. He finds Millie and she's kind of like a waitress there. She avoids him, she doesn't want to talk to him. But the next day, she shows up at his church. She starts telling him that the owner of this club, Luke, ensnared her and that she's committed her body and soul to this Luke guy, but she kind of wants out of it. So she takes asylum at this church. One day out in this courtyard, she starts seducing Father Michael, yeah. taking her clothes off. But he's a priest, right? He won't break his vow, even if it means saving this girl's soul, which she thinks that's what will happen. Yeah. She has sex with this priest. This Luke guy shows up at the church to talk to the father. The father doesn't like this Luke guy because all the stuff that he's heard from Millie. But Luke says, no, 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 that's all a show. The whole Satanist thing, that's just all a big show. It's show business, baby. Yeah, yeah. And he also tells the father that he's been having these weird phenomenon happen to him and He's seeking the priest's help, and he wants the priest to kind of watch over him one night when he <laughs> sleeps because weird things have been happening at night. Father Michael goes to this guy's pad, this nice bachelor pad, and he's all got his outfit on that mannequin. Yeah. <laughs> his satanic outfit. He's sleeping underneath all these satin sheets mm. and everything. Then suddenly in the middle of the night, all this wind blows through the whole apartment. The windows blow open, all the papers swilling everywhere, and the sheets come off. That Luke guy is all in his... <laughs> In his underwear. His underwear. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened? So now the priest is like, oh, geez, something's happening here. Father Michael goes to the archbishop 
and this weird blind priest and they start telling him that you've been chosen to do battle with this demon at this church <laughs> and that's where we're gonna end the plot so if you want to see how the unholy ends keep watching the review that'll bring us to the treasure of this the first thing you'll notice about this movie right off the get-go is the effects the effects are really good in this. Yeah. Top-notch 80s practical effects. Yeah, you can't beat that, baby. And the kills for this movie are really good. Like, you've got the first kill there, the priest who gets his throat ripped open, which is really cool. Luke is another one where they find him, he's hanging upside down on the cross, and he's all skinned up and gutted and everything, yeah. too. The priest doesn't even really seem that phased by it, actually. <laughs> yeah. Which I would. It's like, you come in, like... Holy Christ! Yeah. There's another scene where the guy who Father Michael came to talk off the ledge goes to visit him and he starts puking all his blood, like just tons of blood, like <laughs> yeah. his whole guts and everything, <laughs> uh, right on the church floor. Great again, effect. again, he doesn't really seem <laughs> yeah. all that phased by it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's almost like he's seen it before. Near the end of this movie, there are some really crazy cool monster designs. Yeah. When you see this actual demon and its minions. <laughs> yeah, the floor opens up into hell and yeah. everything. Like, it's awesome. Yeah, there's some really good effects in this movie. And that kind of goes hand in hand with the visuals, because there's a lot of fog, mist. And even in the daytime, there's all this fog. <laughs> the, the priests are getting together, all drinking and everything. Outside, this nice green area. And fog is all coming in out of nowhere yeah. like what the hell the fog in the daytime <laughs> it all helps but it helps yes a lot of shadows use of really cool lighting effects settings are really good too like the church churches are always a good setting for a horror movie because they're kind of creepy with all the statues yeah and just the way they light it in this movie it looks really creepy the movie does hinge on a murder mystery kind of thing it's how the movie plays out with all the movie mystery stuff and it's kind of neat too how all the characters that you're introduced to, you don't really believe any of their motives. You question all of their motives. You don't know if Luke is telling the truth, yeah. if Millie's telling the truth, if the priests themselves, the archbishop, like he's hiding something too. Everyone's a suspect almost. The music in this movie is fantastic too. It's typical 80s. <laughs> horror movie music, but it just suits it perfectly. Yeah, and it does have sax appeal, too. Yeah, lots of saxophone. <laughs> yeah. The acting for this movie is really good. I mean, you got a lot of top-notch actors in this yeah. movie. They deliver it perfectly, you know? It, it's believable for what it is. And the movie is sexy. Yeah. Sexy as hell. Yeah. A lot of good-looking women. <laughs> You see it all. Even the guys like Luke is kind of like presented as like a sexy guy too. So it's kind of a sleek and sexy movie. Yeah, it works both ways, right? Yeah. Not just with women. That'll bring us to the trash for the unholy. And the first thing you have to mention is just the, the way the movie plays out and the structure and the way it's put together kind of doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of all over the place. As the movie progresses, you, yeah. you don't really learn much. <clears throat> yeah, more. exactly. Like it kind of... You get hit in the face in the beginning with this crazy opening, and then the movie just kind of flatlines mm -hmm. all the way to the end. It just coasts all the way to the end. And then at the end, it's a big, huge ordeal, but all the middle, you don't learn anything about like what's going on, what this demon is, yeah. what the priest is doing there. There's a lot of useless scenes in this movie, mm -hmm. and it's a long runtime too. It's like an hour 45. It could easily be cut down an hour and a half. Yeah. Fuck, even an hour 20 maybe. <laughs> Probably. You know, to just make it all kind of a bit more concise. There's also that scene in the beginning, like after the priest dies, then they show Father Michael going to the scene of this crime. And like this guy lying down on the ground, his face is all mashed up and everything, and he grabs him, he's like, she's coming for you. And then he dies, and it's like, what the hell does that have to do with anything? And the dialogue too for this movie, a lot of it is pointless, because it doesn't solve anything, it just sort of raises more questions. Yeah. And a lot of it is also boring too. The priests and stuff, they're saying a lot, but nothing really registers that much because it's boring you tend to tune out. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah. Like when they finally tell Father Michael why they chose him to be at this church, it's like minutes and minutes of just rambling on and all this nonsense and like <laughs> religious jargon. And then you come out of it like, I have no clue what the hell that they're even talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
You don't know what the stakes are in this movie. If the demon wins, does she take over the or world after or what? Or what? just the church? Like what's yeah, yeah? What's at stake? You don't really know. No, you don't know, and so then you tend not to really care that much yeah. either. And I find there's not enough lore or not enough backstory on why this is all happening. You just know it's some demon called the unholy, and that's all you know. Yeah. Why is it there? Does, does the demon keep coming back? Because there's the old blind priest that obviously had some kind of confrontation. So now the demon is back again, so it's like... So, do you have to keep defeating this demon? Why is it at this church in particular? You don't know that? Like, yeah. There's so much questions that aren't answered in this movie. <laughs> yeah. The story is very flimsy. <laughs> it's a very yeah. flimsy story. It doesn't really make much sense, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of useless characters in this movie that don't really add anything or have like a conclusion to their story like Ned Beatty's character the detective he just kind of comes in and out of the movie willy-nilly you don't know what happens to him yeah you don't really know why he cares so much about this particular case and then he just disappears and you never see him again like uh, well if he's so invested in it why doesn't he come in at the end to help or anything yeah like yeah, <laughs> yeah <I know. laughs> uh, even like when Luke he has that book and he takes the book to those psychic women and they they read it and they get all these feelings from it and start going all nuts and then that's kind of that's the end of that it's yeah. like well what is the deal with this book yeah <laughs> yeah you don't really find out what the deal with this book is that everyone's reading from and yeah getting all uh, scared <laughs> from like wish they would have went somewhere with that oh yeah they don't really go anywhere with anything in this movie <laughs> yeah it's just, everything is just kind of there at face value. That's you know? right, yeah. There's a lot of misuse of good actors in this. Mm -hmm. Like Hal Holbrook and Ned Beatty will play very small parts. It's like, man, they should be playing bigger parts in this. Their yeah. their roles should be bigger in the grand scheme of things. The ending, too, for this movie is, like, completely out of left field. It's a very cool ending, but it's not necessary. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it fits the movie at all. Yeah, the movie starts at a hundred goes to about 30 for like an hour and 40 minutes and then the last five minutes goes to 100 again yeah in the craziest way there's all these demons like there's those midget, minions there's midget <laughs> minion things and this they're all punching him <laughs> <laughs> so he's fighting off all these minion demons and there's that thing all walking that shitty puppet thing and it looks kind of like it looks cool but it looks too puppety you know it's yeah too puppetish there's a, an obvious man in there yeah, yeah it's like <laughs> you know? and it's just crazy and, you, and it, it comes out of nowhere it goes from like he's wondering why he's there to suddenly battling demons yeah yeah and they're all feeding them all at those pieces of her body and everything <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like what the fuck is going on <laughs> that one demon's all trying to give him a blow job <laughs> and everything <laughs> those big teeth whoa where did this come from like <laughs> yeah. what the hell's going on i kind of wish they would have had more stuff like that throughout the whole movie right so and, it doesn't hit you so hard yeah. at the end when you finally see it plus it would have made the movie like a lot cooler i yeah. think you yeah. know it's kind of a flat feeling sort of movie all around that yeah. would have elevated it and then the way he defeats the demon he just calls upon god for help and then he wins yeah and, and that's it and that's it like what the hell kind of battle is that it's <laughs> like it's anyone can just god please help me and then you win yeah that is that, that easy. easy you know <laughs> and it's also not definitive enough too for this movie yeah. right you're still at the at the very end the last second of this movie you're still left with more questions than answers. Like, You're like, what well, the hell? Like, why did that happen? Why, how come he's still left like this? But what does Millie have to do with all these? You don't really know, like, what her part to play in the whole story really was. And then at the end, it just shows this statue start to cry blood, and that's the end. It's like, like what, so is it over? I don't, <laughs> yeah. Did they win? I don't know, like. You don't really, you don't get any no, answers in this No movie. answers whatsoever. <laughs> the Unholy, 1988, Trash or Treasure? <laughs> well, this is a movie now for me, I watched it the second time for this review. The first time I watched it, I liked it, but I thought it was trash. I was like, yeah. you know, this is like all just garbage, yeah. you know, basically. <laughs> 
But the second time, a lot more stuff got answered for me, and even though there's a lot of holes in this movie, I still think it's treasure. Yeah? Yeah. See, I'll have to say trash. It's just such a mess. <laughs> yeah. The movie is just a fucking mess. It's visually pleasing like hell, but man, is this story a damn jumble. <laughs> It's a movie I think I could put on in the background, not really pay a whole lot of attention to, but yeah. I would put it on again. Yeah. It's got tons of potential, this movie. Oh, yeah. If they were just to flesh out the whole story behind the demon and what the demon is trying to accomplish and why it's there, that would solve a lot of problems in this movie. Yeah. You may be just as torn as we are by it. Yeah, because it's one of those movies that he does kind of, you're, you're split a little down yeah. the middle with it. And if you guys have seen it, let us know, because we're really curious what other people think about this movie, because we yeah. are kind of torn about it, so it'd be good to have some other perspectives on it. That's right. And until next time, keep drinking.